or here for success with indoor plants. And so I'm hoping that you will learn and glean some information that you can use in your own homes to further your success with house plants or indoor plants. So there's uh, quite a variety of house plants, and this is a photograph of myself and just a demonstration of the wide variety of house plants that you can have in your home. Uh, again, feel free to put questions in the chat as we proceed through the presentation. So there's quite a bit of selection when it comes to house plants, and they provide some uh, visual enhancement to your environment. They can uh, generate happiness. You know, we like getting flowers at Valentine's Day, but there can be uh, more lasting happiness when we have interior plants. They can help us with our health, our uh, wellness, our well being. Uh, studies have shown that it's accelerated the healing process. We can uh, improve our efficiency, our performance if we have some uh, plants in our office space maybe increase our uh, energy, help with our mood. Uh, generally, we just like to have plants in green space. So in this photo, this was from the Denver airport. Uh, it's a living wall. And so there is the use of house plants here to make an aesthetically pleasing area. But houseplants are also used to uh, for their function in directing traffic or screening views. And interestingly, you can also buffer some sound with houseplants. So if you have a room that uh, has poor acoustics, you may be able to uh, add some absorption to the walls of adding houseplants or uh, maybe reflecting some of those sound waves that you might have. In selecting your uh, house plants, you need to think about the criteria in which they're going to be growing. So maybe starting with where they're going to be planted or placed and work backwards in your selection. So think about things like your pets, uh, match those uh, house plants uh, based on their safety. Uh, we want to have uh, safety in mind when we're putting uh, house plants in our homes. Also, how much time do you have to dedicate to your house plants? And maybe you just don't have the time to uh, nurture those house plants as best as you could. And so keep that in mind on the maintenance of the house plant that you're going to be selecting. So there are different factors that we select for. Probably one of the most important uh, factors is going to be the light, and that's going to be critical not only for the, the brightness, but the intensity that we have. Uh, again, how easy it is to care for your plants, how much watering are you going to have to be doing, uh, the size, whether it's a, a tall house plant or if you have a vining house plant, uh, you know, how are you going to handle that? Uh, there's a variety of foliage that's available, but some house plants do have the capacity to flower. There has been uh, scientific studies done for the cleaning properties of house plants, uh, even back in the times when NASA was researching to find out which plants uh, provide a benefit to cleaner environments in your home. But again, some house plants are poisonous, and I'll be covering some of these poisonous house plants. Uh, this is a disclaimer that not every house plant that's poisonous may be labeled in the presentation, but I will uh, highlight some of the ones that are poisonous. So, with light being a critical factor in our homes, I wanted to. Uh, bring this uh, illustration from Mississippi State University uh, Extension that shows how uh, the light output from uh, two 40 watt fluorescent bulbs uh, is distributed. So the, the chart here, these are in inches on the axes. And so uh, you're gonna have variability in the amount of light that you can provide. 
And so we see here at the, the top shelf is our mo most intense light that's being provided by these bulbs. And so for these highlight sit situations, you may have uh, uh, plants like African violet to be uh, grown, and it does best in uh, highlight situations. Then you see it goes in foot candles. And so these are represented in foot candles. So we go from 500, uh, 400, 300, 200, down to 100 foot candles. And so this is represented by the amount of light. And so you can see low light is from 25 to 75 foot candles, medium light to 75 to 150 foot candles, and then high light is 150 to 1,000 foot candles. And we can also have bright indirect light dependent on our situation. So it's important just to know how much light you have. Uh, you can use things like a, a light meter or some have even used uh, their camera and uh, the f-stop function of the camera to determine how much light they are having based on the light source that they are receiving. Humidity is a, a factor in the home that is sometimes neglected to be thought about. Uh, most of our interior spaces, especially in the winter time, can be very low in humidity, uh, less than 20%, sometimes at the most maybe 15% relative humidity. But most of our uh, plants are gonna prefer a higher humidity than that, and some are really affected by a lack of humidity. If you need to uh, gain humidity, uh, you can group your plants uh, closer together, but there's other tools that can be used, such as putting a, a saucer or a container that's filled with water and pebbles or small stones, and that can help increase the moisture, increase the humidity around your plants. Temperature is another factor that we see that uh, we have the comfort of our homes for ourselves, but most plants prefer uh, 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and a little bit uh, less, like 10 to 15 degrees lower for the, the nighttime temperatures. Now we can have excessively low or high temperatures and that's gonna affect the foliage or the growth of our house plants. I've included a couple of links in the presentation. They are in the handout for some resources for poisonous plants. The ASPCA has uh, toxicity for house plants that are related to your pets. And the vet med of the University of Illinois Veterinary Medicine has some resources for poisonous plants as well as a, a poisonous plant garden that you may be able to visit uh, while you're maybe taking a visit to Champaign. But it is interesting, uh, just some of the plants you may not think about uh, as being poisonous. Uh, tomato plants, uh, everything uh, besides the fruit is uh, a poisonous part to the plant. Watering. Watering is a most critical aspect to house plants. Most house plants are going to be killed by improper watering. So most house, house plants uh, will succumb if they don't have proper drainage in the container. And that is a major factor not to be overlooked that most of the time it's not the plant that is at fault. It is ourselves that are to blame uh, for the demise of our house plant. So we have some watering terminology to go through. You can water heavy, you can have medium watering, moderate watering, or light watering. And so these are pretty self-explanatory, uh, depending on the needs of the plant. You have some plants that need to 
maintain their moisture throughout their uh, time in the pot. Others need to dry out and then be rewatered. But you don't really want to have a, a soggy situation where you have too much water. Uh, the plant still needs uh, air and aeration in the soil to have it uh, function properly. So when do you water? You'll want to check the, the soil by touch. Uh, you can tell somewhat by the color, the feel of the, the soil. You may also uh, find the weight of the container changes. So the less water you have, the lighter the container is gonna be. Uh, how often you're watering, uh, you may just know that you have just watered, but you want to avoid calendar watering or uh, watering uh, you know, based on a certain time schedule. You do want to be scheduled in that you uh, check your watering, but there's certain factors that uh, could influence the amount of watering, and one of them definitely is the season. And so in the wintering, we tend to not water as much for some plants. Uh, moisture meters, uh, depending on the moisture meter, the low end uh, kind of moisture meters may not be reliable. So usually that uh, touch of the soil is pro probably adequately uh, an indicator of how and when you need to water. So you can have the similar symptoms whenever you overwater versus underwatering. And so you can see that both in overwatering and underwatering, you may have wilting, you can have yellowing of the new leaves. Uh, if you overwater, you have a risk of a root rot. And so some plants you want to avoid watering near the crown. Uh, underwatering, you may have uh, symptoms on the old leaves. And uh, when things get dry, those spider mites uh, tend to make their appearance if they're there. So the best thing to do uh, for your house plants is to groom them and clean them, keep them uh, free of debris. That's going to lessen the amount of disease that you may have. Uh, you might have to clean the leaves of some plants. Uh, you can wipe those down. Uh, misting can be a way of uh, increasing the humidity, but you want to avoid that on some of the plants that have uh, hairs, and so we avoid that on African violet, but you do want to keep your plants pretty well groomed and clean throughout the season. Uh, containers, so they're going to provide support and drainage for our plant material. They are decorative. So you may have uh, a wide variety of containers to choose from. Some like the ceramic kind, but there may not be a drainage hole in your ceramic pot. So there are some methods that you can use to uh, put a plant uh, pot, a pot inside that uh, decorative pot. You can also elevate that. Uh, in that decorative pot to where the water is not standing, or you empty that out to where there's not standing water inside that decorative pot. That can save your furniture uh, from some water damage at times, but uh, just be aware that you need to have drainage for your house plants. Again, they are in uh, many different types of materials and styles. I've even seen clear. Uh, nursery pots that uh, were developed for orchids because their roots uh, photosynthesize. So you can get kind of uh, decorative and you can see here uh, the circling roots here in this particular house plant. And so be aware of things like circling roots and examine your uh, plant material before you make that purchase and know what you're buying. For your potting mix, uh, soilless is uh, preferred. That is because it's a d disease free, uh, it's been sterilized. You don't have to worry about weed seeds. Uh, there are water absorbent polymers that are uh, included in some potting mixes. 
but uh, generally we see the same watering whether you're using that polymer or without so that added expense is not necessary whenever you're dealing with house plants we just don't see the benefit now fertilizer can be added to your potting mix but it depends on the type of house plant that you're using uh, we want to be cautious when adding fertilizer uh, those salts can build up as we're adding fertilizer throughout the season. And so water soluble uh, fertilizers are used during the active growing season. And we can have also slow release fertilizers that maintain, but they take some time to be activated. So follow the directions for your uh, particular fertilizer that you're using and know what the fertilizing requirements are for your particular house plant. You also want to keep uh, detailed records on when you planted your house plants, maybe you've uh, propagated some, and when you fertilize them so you can keep track of when those uh, events have occurred. Now your fertilizer, you are gonna want to have it uh, applied whenever the plants are actively growing. So the spring is a great time for that. We do have uh, different types of fertilizers, whether they're liquid, granular, there's even some tab tablets. But you uh, typically see a, a low uh, amount of fertilizer, often diluted, that's used for house plants. With house plants, we can have pests. So you want to make sure that you investigate your house plants that you're bringing into your home, uh, look for some of the symptoms of insects or diseases. Uh, we have mealybugs here in the lower right, some scale in the upper right, and uh, also some scale here on the photo on the left. So these are common insects that you might find, mealybug, scale, white flies, fungus gnats or spider mites. Also look for uh, some fungal diseases or any leaf spots. You may uh, have uh, fungus gnats if you've overwatered your plants. If you uh, see the presence of fungus gnats, it may be a good idea for you to let the soil dry out. If you want to monitor for fungus gnats, you can use a, a black light and then a, a card or a a piece of paper with some uh, sticky substance like Tanglefoot uh, added to that card. Uh, yellow cards are good for monitoring as well. When you go on vacation, you may, uh, probably the easiest thing to do is to ask for a neighbor to help, but uh, you can possibly get by with, by increasing the humidity, making sure that your plants are well watered before you leave. Again, grouping your plants together will increase that humidity. But when you bring your plants in or out for the season, you need to give them some time to be adjusted. Uh, the light uh, are gonna be, the lighting is gonna be different. You don't wanna place uh, some plants uh, directly in the sun because you can uh, damage those leaves. And again, check for the insects or d diseases that uh, may make their presence known. Uh, springtime is a good time to repot if necessary. Uh, if you're having to water your plants more frequently than uh, 24 hours, you're gonna need to probably repot your plant and the springtime is gonna be the best time whenever they're actively growing. Uh, I'm gonna cover some of the, the different types of house plants and their ease of care. Again, I'll try and cover some of the poisonous uh, house plants. Uh, this is a Sansevieria or the snake plant. And uh, there's just differences in some of the appearances of some of these plants as we'll uh, continue on. Uh, African violet, it has uh, these attractive flowers in a variety of colors because they've uh, created a lot of propagation efforts and different cultivars of the African violet. Uh, they're pretty 
easy to grow. Uh, they do have a few problems. Again, don't miss the leaves because they have hairy leaves and that's gonna leave too much moisture on these plants. The crown of the plant is susceptible to rotting. Uh, you do wanna have a high humidity. So putting that uh, tray of pebbles with water underneath uh, can help increase that humidity. If they're not flowering, it may be that you don't have enough light. And so uh, adding some artificial light can help. And uh, keep it evenly moist. Uh, you don't want it to, to dry out. And so that's your African violet. The aluminum plant, it is a tropical plant. Uh, best for a warm, humid environment. It gets the, the name from the variegation on its leaves. Uh, you want to keep it in a humidified room, uh, place on that bed of wet pebbles. Again, the, the plant is susceptible to rotting, so you don't want it to be too wet. Uh, it will lose its variegation if the, the light is not strong enough or bright enough but you also want to avoid full sun. You can pinch back uh, the tips to make it a more bushy plant and it's propagated uh, via cuttings. Uh, the aloe plant may be one that you're familiar with. It does need a medium to high amount of light. Uh, generally a problem-free plant you definitely don't want to overwater it or over fertilize. You can uh, remove some of the leaves and clean up the plant as it continues to grow. They are able to be propagated uh, by those uh, leaf tips. You want it to be uh, completely dried out uh, in between waterings. Your average humidity is okay. Uh, in a bright light situation, I have seen it uh, flower inside here in central Illinois. Anthurium has these uh, spadic spathe flowers. They are a poisonous plant, so cautious to the flamingo flower, as it's called. You need to water it uh, heavily with a high humidity. Uh, you want to water it when the the soil is dry to the touch. Uh, high phosphorus fertilizing in the summertime is gonna help it to bloom. And you can wipe down these leaves uh, periodically uh, to remove some of the dust. Uh, the cast iron plant is one of the most durable plants that you can find for a house plant. It is uh, able to withstand a lot of neglect. It can take low light levels. It's a slow growing plant. You wanna water it regularly, uh, except for in the winter time, and it does grow well in containers. Uh, the Chinese evergreen plant is uh, benefited by a high humidity, a low light, you want to reduce the amount of watering in the winter time. It is a poisonous plant and there's many cultivars that are available. So pretty durable, uh, the Chinese evergreen. Uh, the dragon tree or the dracaena, it's uh, pretty durable, a medium light for that uh, particular plant. You don't want to over fertilize. It can also be uh, sensitive to fluoride in the water. So you may want to choose to use uh, distilled water. There are a, a few pests that can pose a problem, mites, thrips, uh, chewing insects, but it is uh, a plant that can be propagated by air layering or by cane cuttings. The peperomia, uh, this is a pretty durable plant. Uh, it's known as the radiator plant because it likes warm drafts or warm temperatures. So with that being said, you want to protect it from cold drafts that you may get in the 
the window at, during the winter. Uh, don't over fertilize, but using that pebble tray may increase uh, the humidity. Pretty easy plant to grow. Uh, the heartleaf philodendron, it's a trailing plant, uh, great for hanging baskets, uh, can be grown in low light, but will benefit from some medium light. Uh, propagated by stem cuttings, probably one of the easiest plants to grow and a lot of, uh, you know, situations where you may support some of that trailing vine as you grow it in your house. Uh, pothos, another easy plant, a very durable, allow that plant to dry out, uh, can tolerate uh, medium light, it can tolerate low light, but you really wanna have it uh, more in the medium range of lighting. Uh, so you don't lose variegation. Uh, this particular cultivar is neon, so it's not a nutrient deficiency or anything. It's just that this plant has been developed for this neon uh, kind of color. Uh, propagated by stem cuttings, again, keep it on the dry side and it should do well. Uh, the snake plant or the mother-in-law's tongue, uh, low light plant, very durable hard to kill, uh, very easy to propagate by leaf cuttings. You just have to note uh, what direction the leaf uh, is oriented in. Uh, the spider plant, uh, very popular for its propagules and ease of propagation. It's uh, pretty durable. It's known for its air filtering qualities. It uh, usually wants to be uh, slightly pot bound to produce the most plantlets, and it does have some fluoride sensitivity. Uh, the Swiss cheese plant or Monstera is a woody epiphytic vine. These showy leaves, uh, your uh, Glossary term, uh, horticulture uh, term for today is fenestration. So that is the, the windows and the leaves are fenestrated. And so you don't want to have it uh, in too bright of a light because it will cause browning. Uh, you want to make sure that you keep the, the moisture level adequate for the Monstera. Uh, pretty easy to propagate by stem cuttings. It is a poisonous plant and it does enjoy a high humidity. Some of our medium difficult house plants are moderately easy. So the air plants are fairly easy to grow. You may think, well, why are they in the, the moderately easy plants? Well, they do need to be watered and uh, submerged in room temperature water about 30 to 60 minutes. You shake them out to prevent uh, pooling in those crevices. Hang them upside down for about 30 minutes. And they are in the bromeliad family, but uh, they will need good air circulation. And they are air plants, so they're not uh, rooted. Here you can grow them in uh, sphagnum peat moss or uh, just even in a terrarium kind of setting, an open terrarium. Uh, the croton, it takes some high direct light, uh, best in a high humidity. Often I see it in uh, kind of the greenhouse situation. You might use the pebble tray to help increase that humidity. It does have a, a poison, a poisonous sap, uh, poisonous leaves. So it is uh, an issue for uh, having in the home with children or pets. Uh, leaf drop can occur if the temperatures are below 50 degrees and spider mites are known to be an issue with the croton. A Diefenbachia, 
so they are a very easy plant to grow, but it's probably those times when you uh, forget about them. So maybe if you left them outside and didn't put them in the, the shaded protected area, those leaves can be uh, just bleached out or uh, really uh, damaged by the amount of sunlight. So they do take a medium light, uh, medium watering. This is a, another poisonous plant. If you see those oxalates on the slide, that means that they contain oxalates in various parts of the plant. And so this uh, does have uh, a bright light, uh, but a diffused light. So it can withstand uh, 25 foot candles. So you don't want uh, the direct light on your Diefenbachia. But very little problems here with the, the dumb cane as it's called. English ivy, so it's not gonna get to the, the size that you would see when it's outdoors and it's more invasive environment. Uh, sometimes these can get up to 80 foot high, but uh, you want to make sure that the soil is draining adequately. You don't wanna overwater it. Uh, most of the time it does good from 50 to 70 degrees. The Boston fern, a fairly durable plant. Uh, these fronds do have spores that you can find on those fronds. You don't wanna mistake those for insects or anything like that. Can take some uh, heavy watering. You wanna keep it uh, adequately moist. It will uh, shed some leaves if it, or fronds if it gets uh, too dry. You can reduce your watering in the winter. Uh, typically a temperature around 60 to 70 degrees. Uh, the bird's nest fern, they have these uh, delicate fronds. You want a medium humidity, uh, medium soil moisture. Again, it's propagated by spores. Uh, water at the, the base of the plant. You may find a few problems such as scale on your bird's nest fern. And here's just another picture to show you some of the contrast of the fronds with some other foliage. Uh, the fiddle leaf fig has increased in popularity. Uh, you can tell that you have a nice, healthy growing fiddle leaf fig whenever it is producing new leaves. These leaves are a dull green fiddle shaped leaf. You want to keep the soil uh, evenly moist. Uh, you don't want to overwater it. Uh, you might want to look at uh, increasing your humidity. Make sure it uh, is in a, a bright uh, area to make it do its best. Uh, the tropical hibiscus, it can be placed outside during the summertime, but brought in. So you wanna be sure to scout for any insects that may come along with it indoors. It uh, can be cut back uh, moderately. Uh, it is gonna require fertilizing and you may uh, have a high fer phosphorus fertilizer added during the summer to encourage bloom. Uh, the holiday cactus, they're very popular. Uh, you're going to need good drainage, uh, a warm environment. Uh, they're propagated by stem cuttings. Usually uh, you can pinch those back and then they'll help with branching, uh, provide light in the wintertime, a uh, high humidity, so using that bubble tray. But uh, you may want to repot it about every three years. So don't overwater it and keep it. Uh, warm, it's gonna thrive in 75 to 80 degrees. So a warm room is required. Uh, the jade plant, uh, pretty easy to grow uh, with some care, can be a slow growing plant. If uh, it doesn't get enough light, your uh, plant leaves can start to droop. 
We'll take a, a moderate amount of watering, uh, want medium to high light, and it is a, a poisonous plant to uh, consider. A popular holiday plant, the Norfolk Island Pine. Uh, you want to uh, let the, the plant dry out uh, in between waterings. You want to water it thoroughly though, and then uh, make sure that you leach out any, any of the fertilizers that are built up in the pot. Uh, you can fertilize it uh, throughout the spring to fall. A uh, moderate amount of watering, uh, um, moderate temperature, uh, typically 55 to 70 degrees is uh, what's required. So most of the time, this may be the best uh, the Norfolk Island pine is going to look after you've uh, kept it for the holiday season. You can have uh, some tip browning if you don't uh, have a high enough humidity or do an adequate job of watering. Uh, the par parlor palm, uh, you can see some of the the fronds here. The leaves uh, are burnt, uh, tip burn. You want to make sure that you uh, fertilize uh, properly. Uh, it's going to require some humidity, uh, but low medium light. So don't uh, put it out in the direct sun for your palms whenever you're putting them out outdoors during the summertime. Okay, the ponytail palm, this uh, swollen part at the bottom of the plant is a storage for water. You want to allow it to dry out between waterings. And uh, it's pretty easy and adaptable. But again, you want to moderate uh, the temperature as you're bringing it in and out and don't just give it time to adjust. Uh, the peace lily. So this can be a, a difficult one for some. Uh, it does tell you whenever it requires watering. So it will look kind of wint wilted, uh, but it can be fluoride sensitive. So you may take caution to that when you're watering. It's gonna benefit from a high humidity. Uh, the high humidity is gonna encourage uh, flower production. Usually you'll see this uh, shiny foliage. Uh, may want to do some fertilizing as it is a flowering plant uh, as we're approaching here into spring. Uh, be cautious of things like uh, the leaf tips uh, browning. You want to make sure that you water, but then let, uh, give it some time to dry out. And again, you don't want to have plants just sitting in water. Uh, the prayer plant, so this uh, has leaves that can fold up in the duration of the plant, the difference between uh, light and darkness, uh, fairly durable, uh, warm temperatures. Uh, the leaves are going to burn with high fluorides or over fertilization. Uh, you want it in a bright but indirect light so you don't bleach out the attractive colors of the prayer plant. Uh, the rubber plant, uh, these can be fairly durable, uh, medium humidity. Uh, they do have a latex sap, so that may be a caution if you uh, get that on your skin and have a latex allergy. Uh, temperatures are gonna be greater than 55 degrees, so you wanna make sure you get those in inside whenever we approach uh, fall. The umbrella plant or the chafflera, it's a pretty good uh, durable plant. Uh, doesn't like wet feet, so you don't want to overwater it. So uh, make sure if you have saucers underneath your pots that you make sure that those are emptied uh, whenever you're uh, watering your house plants. You want this to almost completely dry out uh, between waterings. You can prune occasionally to help maintain its shape and uh, encourage branching. And it does have a sap that is an irritant. Uh, the split leaf philodendron, uh, these plants can be brought back inside when the temperatures uh, dip down below 60 degrees. 
Uh, no serious pests for this plant. Uh, it doesn't tolerate salt buildup, so you'll want to make sure that you flush out the pot uh, during the growing season. Uh, the weeping fig, uh, note the coloration on the leaves here, uh, can not like uh, a draft. So you want to uh, protect it from doorways or places where you're gonna have a draft. Here's another uh, picture of the weeping fig to show you how glossy the leaves can look. So you wanna make sure that you've uh, put it in a protected place and leave it in a protected place as it doesn't like to be moved. Uh, the leaves can be uh, lost whenever you're moving to a different location. Some of our challenging house plants can be ones that flower like your citrus plants, uh, edible plants, again, uh, citrus, or larger plants that can be a challenge. So orchids, there's a, a ver wide variety of different kinds of orchids and it's uh, a different culture when it comes to growing orchids. So you may have uh, been told to water with ice cubes, but that's not what you want to do. It's just the amount of water is about the amount of an ice cube that uh, cold water can affect the root system of the orchids. So just keep in mind that the different types of orchids have each of their own characteristics and different care, but a high humidity is something that we usually see with your orchids. Alocasia, or some may think of the elephant ear. Uh, these are very sensitive to temperatures below 55 degrees. It uh, has these arrow shaped leaves and some of these plants can get fairly large, uh, low light, medium humidity and propagated by division. Uh, baby's tears can be grown indoors or outside, but uh, it's used in a hanging basket, uh, best in a high humidity. You can propagate it by cuttings or division, but that bright indirect light is gonna be uh, beneficial. Calathea, another part of the, the prayer plant family. Uh, again, you're gonna need high humidity for these kind of plants. They need to be kept moist, but not too moist. And be aware of your light levels that you do not bleach out the leaves. Here's another uh, glimpse. Uh, you, can shade them out with some other plant material, but uh, that low light is gonna be needed and don't allow the temperatures to go below 55 degrees. The giant bird of paradise is uh, best known for its inflorescence that looks like the head of a bird. It's uh, one that can be put outside uh, during the summertime. It uh, sunny to a semi shade location whenever it's outside. Make sure you have good air circulation. Uh, it's propagated by seeds or division. Uh, the temperatures can get down to 55 to 65 at night. But once you put it in a place, you want to try to keep it in that location and it can uh, flower intermittently. Uh, the nerve plant you may have seen in a terrarium uh, it will look pretty wilted if you've uh, let it dry out too much. It's pretty drastic in its uh, appearance whenever you've let it go too dry. But uh, a nice kind of tropical plant to have as a house plant. And you might have uh, other house plants that you have thought of uh, during the presentation. And so feel free to put those in the chat. If you, if I didn't cover every house plant that you thought should be in this presentation, I'd be open to maybe some others of interest. So with that, you can continue to uh, type your questions in the chat and I'll get to those as we proceed at the end of the presentation.
we have our past recordings. Uh, this session is recorded and we'll be posting it to our YouTube channel. And so you can go to that with this short URL or we usually send an email reminder and uh, we have a survey so you can scan the QR code or uh, go to this short URL go.illinois.edu slash indoor plants eval and we'd be grateful for you to fill out that evaluation and to let us know how we did.